Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at another feature of Zimneo, and that is animating along paths used with parallax. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we will press on the logo, and in comes our stuff, and there's parallax right there. So we've talked about these other features in Zim Bubblings. Now we're on Parallax. And what Parallax does is as you sweep the mouse here, things move, and that, that, that one right there is a dynamic animation. It just whipped by. Uh, this fellow right here is on a path, so there's the path. And as I move my mouse uh, up and down there, it is animating along a path a percent complete. So that's go. Oh, and here comes the moon. The moon is animating via percent speed. So we've just set it so it can go backwards a little bit, but primarily goes forward and can go forward fast if we want. And that way, when our mouse is in this area, the moon just continues to whip around in that rotation. So that's a, a circle with its registration point brought um, way down. And there she goes again, animating in this big circle at a certain speed. And as we move the mouse to the right, that speed increases, so it will come by sooner. One day, there it comes. And if I move the cursor to the left, it animates more slowly that way. So you can control speeds. Uh, I was going to do a whole bunch of birds, and when I put my cursor up here, the birds would go fast. And if I bring them down, they go slow or something like that. Um, one neat thing is the depth. Can you see how the depth is working there? So as it goes along the path, it goes in behind something, but here it's going in front of something. So that's pretty cool. Now the path itself uh, does not. It's just nested in between these two things, but the uh, the guy will de depth shift. So, oh, we should go in and take a look at some of the code on how we did this. Yes, yes, yes. Right. We've already, uh, oops. Over there. We've already looked at this uh, in an earlier bubbling, but these bubblings are about the code itself. So here we are, Zim Neo Parallax with Zim 9, although we're up to Zim 9.1. We come on down into the code. We've made a new parallax object, and that parallax has been around for quite some time. We've made a backing, a sky, and uh, I suppose that's a moon. And we're animating the moon. We've made it dynamic. That allows us to control the speed of it with percent speed. Otherwise, it's very traditional animation where we're rotating 360 degrees and looping that in linear. Uh, here's the moon's percent speed, so uh, that will um, start it off going backwards a little bit. Parallax, add layer. So now to the parallax, we're adding a layer, the moon. We're animating the property of percent speed. So parallax can animate any property based on um, some input. If there is no input, then that means it's the x position, or it's the x, the mouse x that we're animating. Split false means naturally when you animate in the x, half the parallax goes to the left that way and to the right that way sort of thing. So it defaults with a split of true. So we set it to false so that it won't do that. And the, then a property change of 700 uh, percent at the max. I'm not sure what that's doing now. Uh, property change 700 percent from left to right, I think, or something like that. So uh, we can speed that animation up if we want. Here's the mountain. We're parallaxing that with a property change of 20 pixels. So that is now pixels, 20 pixels, with a um, and we're changing the x position of that based on again on the input of the x. Here's the tree and changing the property. So this is parallax and parallax above. Here's the trail. There's a 
person on it. The trail, what is the trail? Uh, the trail is the blob, so that we recorded the blob there again is, is how we can quickly record information of a blob. We remember it from the last time and when we refresh the page it just pops up the, up the recorded uh, information of what we remembered. Or you could make a button. This is just an this is instead of making a button, you could you could make a button and when you press it, hit the trail record. But it is handy to have the while you're building, it is handy to have a recording of it. Just in case you refresh a page or lose it or when you want to come back, you, you know, you want the the path to still be there. That's what this does. So as this is a good combination while recording, and once you've recorded it, then comment it out. We parallax the layer as well, and that's because we're going to be following this path. So the path itself is, is also moving. Now, would you like to see what would happen if we really parallaxed it? How about 360? So let's drag, and we refresh here. Uh, where's the path? And what is that changing on? Oh, I didn't see any. Oh, this got rid of the wrong one. This is a. Oh, and hey, there's my bubbling videos. Woohoo! I need to see those right now. Open in browser. Did I say open in browser? <laughs> I think I did. Firefox is running, but not. There we go. I don't know what all that was about. And now we should see that path move in the X and Y. You see how much that path is moving because we've increased it. And yet, this fellow can still run around that path and uh, move a lot if we so desire. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And at the same time, can we make him run right through the tree? Mm, almost. He's still going around the tree. All right, so we parallax that path just a little where, where we thought the parallax should be so that it, it does indeed parallax as well. And now we have a person. So did you catch that? This is a path that is moving. And we are also animating along that moving path. The path is being animated by parallax. We're uh, animating along that path with an animate. The path we say is trail, which is what that is a trail. We're not changing the orientation along that path. We're just leaving it straight upright. Here is the zoom. Now, zoom is almost like parallax. Oh, I wanted to show you as well that parallax of this, which is down below here, the parallax of person is based on an input of mouse y. By default, it's input of mouse y0 at the top and stage height at the bottom, but you can change those input mins and maxes. And from that, you can get output mins and maxes too. Um, so that is really just what's called uh, the Zim Proportion class or Zim Proportion Damp class. And all parallax is, is a uh, a manager for a series or a bunch of Zim parallax, uh, sorry, Zim uh, proportion damp objects, where we can add those and then they all sort of run together as one system. And really, here with this zoom, it's much like extra. Uh, well, it is extra. So here's how you would do zoom with extra you would say the input property y, the input min, the input max. The output property is scale, and the output min, and the output max. And that's what these numbers right here in the zoom mean. So zoom is a short form for writing an extra that looks like that. So we've left the extra in. And the reason for that is to just give you a little bit of an indication as to how extra is working. Because you don't have to only zoom and only change a layer and only change a depth and only change, there's one more in there, the scale. Uh, no, that was zoom, depth, uh, yeah, which is layer. Is that actually layer? Let me change that to depth. Oh, this is the layer. Okay, so zoom is that. No. That was, uh, that's kept as layer, okay. Maybe not depth then. Let's just change, check that in the docs. Maybe we didn't change that on ourselves here. 
Zim docs and animate. Animate. Come on down here. You see that all right? Parameters, props, convenience, props, path, orient, flip, extra, zoom, speed, layer. All right. Is la oh, right, because depth is used as a word in um, VR. So for VR, we have depth. So we kept it saying layer. Fade is the alpha. Speed was the other one. Okay, so we can control the speed as it goes back. So all these one, two, three, four are the short forms for extras that relate to these properties. We've kept, we've kept this in here though to show you that these values match that kind of information. And basically these values are just being put into a Zim proportion damp or a Zim proportion uh, class or object right now. All right, now we, these are the uh, outputs. These two are the inputs. And notice how precise we are here. This is where the top of the path is roughly. And oh, uh, is it the path or is it the person? Um, just go back and check this out here. Here goes the person. So uh, where the person is now is one of those, and where the person is here is another. So between these two positions, X and Y, we are changing the layers between these two 0.4 to 0.7. Oh, that's zoom. Uh, sorry, between these two right here, we're changing layers from 1 to 2. And what that does is it just puts it either behind or in front. Now, we did play around with this for uh, a fair bit. We started off without these values, so just going from 0 to the stage height, and then used percentages here, say 0 to 5 or something, and tried to work out these numbers so that it would go through the layers properly. And that can be tricky. Uh, so at that point, we then added, well, OK, maybe everything can't be from 0 to whatever and have percentages. Perhaps we should provide inputs. So those are the two inputs. And then the outputs relate to that. Uh, by the way, those are clamped, I think. Uh, I think they are clamped, which means, uh, let's just check the, the details here in the, the docs. Does it say speed true input sets percent speeds based on animating or along a path? We'll have changing speeds, anything unclamped. No, I don't see anything specifically there. Maybe it's in the extra. Subjects have the following extra, extra, extra. Constrained output factor. There's no, there's a constraint. Ah, right, okay, so constrain is what we're looking for. Constrain the output values to output min and output max. Set to false to let the values go beyond the maxes. Okay, so I believe that they're all constrained by default. If you don't want constraint on these ones, then you might have to turn to the Zim. Uh, extra version here so that you can apply your constraint there. It just means when it when values continue outside of these ranges right here, when I've moved my mouse higher or lower, I I'm limited to going to one. I, I won't go zero, and when I'm uh, when I'm way down here, I won't go beyond two. Uh, as soon as I hit that, it will be two or it changes between 1 and 2 between these two values, but it won't go beyond 1 and 2. However, uh, if you like to set a range and have these values apply to that range, but as I go outside the range, then you would not want that to be constrained, at which point you could rebuild this with extra and put in a constraint of false. Oh, boy. OK, another word for that is clamp sometimes, and that's what I was thinking about before. And we're looping. We're starting pause true, so that doesn't just spin around on its own. Well, it might not. I'm not sure, because uh, the parallax kicks in right away as soon as it knows where the mouse is. And linear loop. Right, good. I think uh, that's it.
and we're parallax or we're parallaxing one more time. We're parallaxing the prop of percent complete. There's the tree. Here's a path check. Oh, this is if we want to see the path. We can turn the path on or not the trail based on the path check. And that's it. There's making some assets of a tree and a mountain and a person. Cool. That has been a what's bubbling at Zim. We were talking about making this move around with parallax. I'm planning on making a Halloween parallax feature, which has a whole bunch of spooky monsters and things happening based on these percent completes and percent speeds as the user moves their mouse. You can also scroll. There's scroll parallax as well. So all these animations, techniques would work a percent complete percent speed paths and zooms and so forth would work as well with uh, page scroll parallax. If you want to see page scrolling parallax, then you can go to the Zim site under examples and produce your size so you can see some examples. And there's a couple parallax ones in here done quite some time ago, the holiday parallax and the parallax example. Oh, here's where some of these assets came from. So as I mouse wheel the page, There's mouse embedded in there. Reuse the assets on that. Right, so now imagine all these things instead of just straight line animations, which is what we've got here, that we had animating things along a path or animating the speed of something depending on how far down the page you are, that type of thing. Very cool. I am Inventor Dan Zen at Zim, zimjs.com. Come on in and talk to us at Slack as well. We're trying to get the conversations rolling there. So far, so good. Zimjs.com slash Slack. And hopefully you've started using Zim. If not, come on in. It's pretty easy to do. And there's much more than animation as well. Looking forward to seeing what you build. Ciao.